for joining me again from four minutes ago. Welcome back. Uh, might be able to see chats here in a second, might not, but I thought I would just let you join me today while I tinker with this new boat build I have going on. And uh, it's basically the same method as the other boat, the Miss Courtney, that more people seem to like. So if you watch how I do this, it'll pretty much show you how to do that. And uh, if you like this, if you want to see more live stream stuff, just comment the word more or hell yeah or do more or something like that so I know that you're not just watching it and putting up with it. And I will be wearing hearing protection and maybe some visual protection at some point. So what I've already done here is this is going to be my floor and I purposely have it strung between two sawhorses so that it'll make a curved floor and uh, that'll help with the style and with drag in the water. Sometimes I think the bottom will actually come out of the water. For the top, that's my end. And by the way, this is hearing protection from my own voice, because I don't want to hear myself talk. Uh, so this is my top piece here. I still have to kind of slender it, or uh, smooth it out here. And it will be about this far offset, just to give you an idea here, and about this tall making some kind of beautiful, badass looking curve. Something that looks powerful. Uh, I have my transom piece already cut too. And uh, I'm hoping it's not too, not too tall. It's about here. So I'm thinking, so this is gonna be the same as my two seater boat, but uh, it's a little shorter. And it's going to be for one seat, one person. So, show you this specialty tool. It's a regular four inch grinder with what's called a lap sander wheel or a paddle sander, I like to call it. Basically, layers of sandpaper. And when you turn it on, it'll, you can basically sculpt the wood. I'll show you what I mean here. So I got this little corner here I don't like. I want it to be smooth and rounded off. You follow me, camera gay? So I'm gonna just touch it with this. down on a hard surface and do it down so it doesn't move around as much. Honestly, got a question. Yeah, what's that? There, uh, we got somebody, uh, Archaic Productions is wondering, is it going to have the jet drive or question yes, mark? We were just talking about the jet drive. And um, talking about how inefficient it is, I don't know if we still have it out here, but I don't think it's going to have a jet drive, I don't know. We could do that, but it's just so much easier to do the trolling motor. Yeah, uh, this guy, Archaic Productions, has been hassling the shit out of me for this jet drive. He must, he must have some good ideas too, or you must. But uh, anyways, back to the yeah. subject at hand. It's kind of funny, this doesn't matter that much because I'm going to have a strip of 
weather door weather stripping around here anyways and it'll just kind of cover all these little inconsistencies anyways so I think right now I'll put the old transom on the old tranny and I'll uh, pre-fill holes for that and you can see this wood is actually curved the transom is actually going to have a gentle curve too, which I think is awesome. And I might even try to curve it more, but probably not. So I'll put it on here with the curve in the direction I like. And kind of pray. And I'll just drill it from the top first. This is a really chintzy Black & Decker drill here. Got a question from viewer Brett Davis wondering, okay. are you going to enter this one into the Coeur d'Alene Boat Show this year? You know, we were actually just talking about that too. We kind of want to do a uh, gorilla show up uninvited, crash the party. We were just talking about how awesome it would be to show up with a troop of these at the wooden boat show, classic wood boat show. And uh, I think that would be terrifying, for one, to uh, talk to people about these, but it would be hilarious. And I think generally people would be pretty interested, too. So it would go over well, I think. Mini boat regatta. So if you want to come drive one of the boats in the boat show, if you got cojones that big, let me know. We might be able to do it. Uh, Just doing a few holes here. You have to be careful at the end that you don't send a screw up and out where your size of the boat's going to be because it's actually got a reverse curve this way. So I'm going to hang hang back from here a little bit, maybe even angle one in. But I'll drill them from this side and countersink it from the back side. And it's important to countersink any screw that's going to be under fiberglass mesh because it's going to create a bump if you don't and the mesh will actually hang over that and the epoxy will drain away from the mesh and it'll leave holes all around every screw. So I'm going to come underneath, or I'll flip it over so you can see. Today on the New Yankee Workshop. <laughs> Archaic Productions asked, are you meeting Andrew Jones when he does his trip to the coast? If he, uh, he might not know this, he, if he goes to Seattle and he takes Interstate 90, he'll be going through a quarter mile away from my house. So if he doesn't stop on the way to Paul Elkins' place, shame on him. If he's not, if he's going a different route, then he may not stop here. But we've already talked about it, and he sounds like he's he's dan he's down. So, and he's definitely invited, as well as anybody else who can fly here or drive here or whatever. Because I have a boat for you. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, this has a countersinking bit, so it, it'll make a little hole for the head of the screw. And you can see down here. I already drilled the hole so it'll be easy to find. Now just kind of make a nice little hole. So then when a screw goes through, you can see that it's completely flush there. So I'll just do that to all of them. Now this uh, wood here isn't super high quality. I can bondo any any gaps or whatever if I have to, but it's uh, basically 5 8 inches thick and it costs about, I don't know, like 15 bucks or something. It's pretty low grade, but it's pretty strong. And uh, then the quarter inch side panels and top panel are about $10 each and you need two of those. So I got that on there. Maybe I'll switch sides here. And uh, put my 
transom on. Actually, I might pre-drill some holes into the transom too because that'll keep it from splitting as much. So I'll kind of line it up. I have angles cut off the back portion of this piece of wood too, just to make sure it stays out of the way of any of this side panel. So I'll go under here and pre-drill a little bit. Or not. You might need to screw it in a little first. So I'm just kind of making marks with the drill bit. A lot of you are sitting there thinking, why don't you just use a tape measure? And I could do that, but I'm not gonna. So these are the screw holes here, and I'll just center them up ish. So I want them to suck the transom flush. I do have a tape measure, so I'm not that incompetent. Drill these a little deeper. This to make the screw not want to pop out either side, especially the back, for obvious reasons. Da 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 da. You can use it. You think? No. So that's not even necessary, so I won't take too much time on that. And I got some screws here, which I'm going to switch out for some better stainless screws, but for now, it'll work. Those are lining up. I'm going to put a screw in here. I didn't really take a lot of time finding out the exact center for the actual screw, but as long as the transom's centered, it should be fine. So that one was off center, so it sucked the transom out and broke through. But that's okay. I should be using shorter screws, actually. That would tighten down pretty good. So I only have two screws in there right now, but it's enough to kind of get going and I can uh, add those later. Anybody talking shit on there yet? No, I just keep hitting shit with the, oh, the stand. Okay. Watch your mouth, young man. Excuse my language. Yeah. Uh, so next I'll put on the stem. Now the stem is my most favorite angle of all. 22 and a half degrees. 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 I just love it. It's the best angle. It's the magic angle. It's probably in the stonemason's book of evil numbers. Uh, so, I basically need to find a center line for this side and kind of trace out. Now this side, uh, I also cut 45 degree angles on each side, meeting roughly in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect because a lot of times the siding won't even tighten up to it that tight anyways, but it's out of the way, so that's the main goal. Can I get a rough idea of where it's centered out.
So then I'll do the same method of drilling from the top so that it be easy. And uh, this back screw, I might actually do this one from the top. But so I don't want to go too far back and have it split out the front of the stem or top. So I'll just do a cut three of them. Those from the bottom. Okay, Productions asked if brass screws would be better than stainless, and that most builds he's seen recommend brass. brass over stainless steel screws. Yeah, I don't really, I don't know what to think about that because a lot of my bigger boats have stainless screws everywhere, and they do eventually. It seems like they do rust, but the. The screws on here shouldn't be subjected to moisture in any way either, so it's kind of like a, a risk I'm willing to take. But yeah, when I made a boat as a kid, they sent all brass screws, and uh, it probably, it might even be for saltwater issues that I don't have to deal with, but if anybody else knows, I don't know what's going on here. else knows maybe in the comments it'll show up but that's an awesome question because that's what they say so, uh, referencing a boat I built when I was a kid from the Glen L magazine and they did stitching glue type of stuff as well as other boats uh, these I'll just suck right into this thing I don't think it's gonna split without and actually right now I'm not even using stainless screws to be honest with you. I'm just using like cabinet screws. But uh, I think I'm going to switch them out for either construction screws or uh, stainless or anodized or something. To have some stainless here. But these are actually not stainless even. These are just sheet metal screws or something. I've never had a problem with any of them rusting on the other boats. But I also don't store my boats in the water. I take them in for a few hours at a time, if that. So it's kind of not applicable. So I'm gonna put this back in here. And I love having the hammer drill too, because it just cinches stuff down so tight with not a lot of effort. Whereas just putting the drill bit in the screw gun is a pain in the butt. Adjusting it. It's already really tight with just that one screw. The other thing is this all gets this is all a system. It's like if you were to take a, a drum and take just the head of the drum, it's really flimsy and floppy, and even the sides of it might be easy to push on, but as soon as you put it all together, it's solid and tight. You wind up not needing near as much material as you might think. Unless you're going down white water rapids, then you need all that. Alright. So then, kind of get a better idea of how this will look. So I might need to chop down my height somewhere. But I kind of like having this up higher and having it curved down. And I think that's pretty good, but uh, I need to cut this cockpit out real quick. And uh, for you new guys, give you a quick safety tip on the the old saw. You want to keep your blade, I don't know why I put the battery in before messing with this, but you want to set your blade depth to be just beyond where you're cutting 
for a few different issues. So tighten it there about. And uh, that'll help it keep, keep it from binding up and it puts less pressure on your blade and your battery will last longer, a few other reasons. Uh, the other thing is the top side of my boat is gonna be this side. That's the visible side. And the blade cuts this way. So if there's going to be splintering, it's going to be splintering on this side. So I always want to cut it from the back side, and it'll make a really clean cut on the on the show side. Because that's what these are. These are show boats. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they're all for show, no for go. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, so if you just hold these nice and slow, you can actually plunge cut into anywhere you want. This is probably going to get insanely loud, but... All right. And I'll leave I'll stay off these radiuses and do that with the jigsaw. surface and not be worried about cutting into it because I know it's just barely below the surface. Determine where my first ribs will be because I need a cross member right by the dashboard opening as close to the cockpit as I can. So that's kind of something to take into account on your boat. Safety Dan's shitting his pants. Good news, guys. I just figured out how to mute it so I can make it quiet during the saw scenes for those of you who are listening with headphones. Yeah. Apologize. They're already dead. <laughs> I think we lost one viewer just to the loud saw noise. That's my bad. Oh, yeah. Well, this. Yeah. Okay. He's back. We're hey, good. Hey, welcome back, guy. Sorry your internet cut out on you. Stopping this side the radius. The radius I made just by putting this propane tank and tracing it with a sharpie there. Pretty simple. Just the shape I like. Also, paint cans work well if I wanted a bigger one, which I still could do. Just kind of a more gradual shape. It's a little stronger, I bet. And I've got the jigsaw here. Is there any more questions? Uh, Brett Davis just had a parting comment that uh, thanks for the inside look at your work and he hopes you go viral and make big YouTube bucks. That is the dream. But also to have a mini boat regatta cruising the lake this summer would be amazing. Oh yeah, I mean, I think if we just find a good place and a good time of day too, but this boat should be super stable. To the uh, bottom of the floor is going to be 30 inches wide, 
versus my Miss Courtney boat, which is like 21 inches wide at the bottom. So it's just going to be way more stable, even if there is big waves. But if we find the right time of day to go out, I think it'd be no problem. Uh, Archaic Productions asks, how long does it usually take you to make one of these start to finish? Good question. We were actually talking about that earlier as well. Yeah. yeah. Not in this broadcast, but just in person, pre-production. Yeah. Well, like you see here, it's going pretty fast. Uh, it took about, I'd say generously, I'd say two hours to get it all measured out and everything. I actually chased the, traced the shape of my Miss Courtney pattern for the top so it went really pretty fast but I'd say just to get ready for epoxy and fiberglass I could do it in three or four hours no problem but then the epoxy and fiberglass part takes a few hours of labor plus a bunch of hours of curing time and finicky checking on it and pulling out mosquitoes and sawdust and everything out of the finish and then doing little bonus stuff here and there uh, what I'm doing now is cutting the radiuses. I'm making sure this is so floppy that I have it right next to my work surface, which happens to be the floor of my boat. You see this blade also cuts on the upstroke, so the top up here is going to be much messier and chipped out than the bottom, so that's good because I want to cut from the back side anyways. I always have the mentality that if I mess up any of these cuts, I can usually smooth it out or cover it with some kind of trim. So I really don't take a lot of stress out of, or put a lot of stress into it. I just kind of go with it. And a lot of times it winds up being a mistake that looks better. Basically, I'll just show you what I would do. So I'm going to find my the height that I like. Under here, with this piece here, I'll make two of them, and that'll just kind of start my whole profile. I'll have it like up like this. And this, is, this is straight with this, 90 degrees, just like that. I'll do one on either side. Then I'll continue reinforcing all of it, making more ribs, and uh, that'll be that. So I guess that'll have to conclude this episode of American Boathead. I was yelling this whole time. That's interesting. Um, Wasn't too loud. Well, not too loud. No. Uh, so anyways, thanks for joining me. If you like this, say so down below. Uh, if you didn't like it, also say so.